Hey up and welcome to Callum's Corner, a football video. Right, last night I did a video on spasmoids and there is a massive spasmoid in football at the moment that needs to be stopped. His name is Gareth Southgate. You all know him and I think he's about to get the England job. And this, we should be doing everything we can to stop this. I mean, just look at his face, the gormless face. It screams spasmoid. This man has been over-promoted. He's in the right place at the right time. He would never be being linked with the England job if he hadn't got lucky enough to somehow be at the right place to get the caretaker job. And now he's pressuring the FA saying he wants a decision within a month. What has he ever done, Gareth Southgate? Crap as England on the 21 manager. The last top-level job he had was Middlesbrough. He got sacked. He got them relegated. A really decent team as well they had then. You know, under McLaren, they'd been mid-table. They're doing well in the UEFA Cup. He took them down. There is no way that Gareth Southgate should be England manager. I do not understand the outcry to name him so quickly. Yes, we've had a bit of instability because of the Allardyce debacle, but that does not mean that we should jump in to the first manager just to get stability. It's not right. Look, the qualifying group that we've got, we're going to qualify. It's a pretty easy group. You know, any, almost anyone could manage that team and get them qualified out of that group. There is no need to jump into bed with Gareth Southgate. You know, not many people want to jump into bed with him and we, we definitely shouldn't. Leave him as interim manager or get a different caretaker in. Wait till the end of the season. Give Eddie Howe a chance to keep on progressing. He's a bright English manager. He's actually got a team promoted. He's kept Bournemouth in the Premier League. Massive achievements. Gareth Southgate is a nothing like that. And Eddie Howell teams play a good, decent brand of football. Gareth Southgate is not the long-term answer. He has not got the coaching record to manage England for the next few years and take us forward. He's offering nothing new. Eddie Howard, you know, there's, if you want a manager who's not going to build for the long-term, who's just going to get every single drop out of the players that we've got, Sean Dyche. Look at what Dyche has done at Burnley. Absolutely magnificent job. And I'm a Blackburn fan. It pains me to say that. But Dyche, Eddie Howe, both English managers, both got a much better track record than Gareth Southgate. Both have managed with success. We should not be appointing Southgate. Look at him. He's a spasmoid. He looks like a geography. He looks like a PE teacher who teaches geography on the side. Gormless face. You could just imagine him blowing his whistle and giving gimpy little team talks. He's not someone who's going to inspire the players. He's not a leader of men. He's not tactically brilliant. What is he offering apart from being English and being in the right place at the right time? There's no way he should get the job. Gareth Southgate is a spasmoid and we should be doing everything we can to stop that. Now, it's been a little while since I made a football video, so I'm going to push on and chat about it a little bit more. I'm going to talk about the Premiership season where we are so far. Liverpool topping the league. That's incredible. You know, the job Klopp is doing there is absolutely magnificent. I said a couple of months ago, Sadio Mane, Mane was good, is one of the signings of the season and a few people laughed at me. Just look at what he's doing. At Southampton, he was always capable of playing out of his skin. He could play at the level of a world-class player and absolutely destroy teams. Now, if he's adding consistency to that, so if he's stepping up to that le level on a regular basis, he is going to be a world-class player and he's going to make the world a difference for Liverpool. They are going to be strong this year. Uh, the only question marks over them for me are at the back. Um, I still don't think they've got a world-class centre-back. Um, the new goalkeeper is starting to look a little bit more settled. He did well against Watford, which is a challenge for any foreign goalkeeper. Lots of aerial balls. Uh, but for me, I think the biggest test will come around Christmas time for them once the squad starts getting stretched into the new year when, when Mane goes off the African Cup of Nations. Yeah, it will be a test for them. Although they have got Origi, who hasn't played that much this season, but at the end of last year, he looked like a real talent. So Liverpool are going to be up there and challenge him. I still believe if anyone finishes above Man City, they will win the league. Man City have had a bit of a blip, as I said, I thought they might. Um, incredibly difficult for Guardiola to come over to this country and manage. There's an intensity to English football and just a sheer volume of fixtures that he wouldn't have been used to. Plus City for me, although they've got an incredible squad, especially in the attacking and midfield areas, they're... A little bit weak at the back still. They, like, like um, Liverpool, they lack a world-class centre-back. Used to be company. I think he's finished at the top level now. And also their full-backs, you know, Sagna, um, what's his name, Clichy. Both used to be one of the best right and left-backs in the Premier League. They're getting on a bit. They're nowhere near at the level they used to be. Kolarov has been playing at centre-back and he's a full-back for me and he's not a world-class full-back. 
And you've also got um, the Argentine time guy with his head to Zabaleta, um, he's got a similar hairline to me. He again, used to be a world class player, has just dropped a level over the last year or two. So, yeah, they're a little bit weak at the back, but if anyone finishes above them, I think they will win the league. Moving on down, we've got Arsenal there, who I feel really should be top um, by now. They've wasted some opportunities. Wenger has finally brought in a centre-back in Mustafi, and they now have, in my opinion, the strongest centre-back pairing in the league. They've got Bellerin at right-back. It was just incredible. His recovery pace and what he adds going forward as well is immense. He's the best right-back in the league for me. And they've got Monreal at left-back, who is really improved over the last couple of years. Really strong back four, strong goalkeeper. Um, Carzola's injuries always hit them badly, but now hopefully not so badly, because they've got um, Zaka to come in there. Um, yeah, for me, again, Wenger did fail slightly in the transfer market. He signed Perez, who is a decent player, don't get me wrong, but he's one of those players who can play anywhere across the front three, four, and they needed an out-and-out -out striker. Should have broken the bank. Should have done it years ago to sign Higuain. Uh, look, he went to Juventus for 80 million. Arsenal could have signed him for 30-odd million before he went to Napoli, and Wenger balked at it. He's not saving money by doing this. Every day that he waits, the prices go up. They need an out-and-out world-class striker, in my opinion. Um, I think they're going to challenge for the league, but I think ultimately we'll probably see them in third place. Uh, completing the top four, actually, I better have a little look because I don't remember who is fourth at the moment. Um, I think it's still Tottenham, is it? No, Man City, Chelsea. Oh, how could we forget about Chelsea? Their tactical shift has seen them perform miracles. Uh, the Premier League just didn't seem ready for prepared for what Conte was going to do. This new formation is, is dazzling people. They're scoring goals. They're defending well. Um, the only thing for me, I don't think they are going to win the league, um, although they're going to be very, very strong. Um, to have a backup, you know, they've got backup world class strikers, they've got backup world class attacking midfielders. The only thing for me is the two wing backs that they're playing, um, the Italian guy Alonso and Victor Moses are probably a level below the top class players. And they've both got incredible energy. Victor Moses especially looks like a player reborn, but it's gonna be a challenge for them to play at the level required for a whole season. Because I don't believe either of them have done that yet in their careers, played at that top level for a whole season. So that could see them slightly derailed. Really surprised that they let Cuado go back um, over to Italy, to Juventus. Um, I know Conte liked him. It was him who wanted to bring him in to, to Juve in the beginning. And he could have played that right back role probably better than Moses with more energy and slightly more end product. He's done it for longer. So surprised they let him go. Be interesting to see who they bring in the transfer window. But yeah, they're a team reborn at the moment and they're absolutely scintillating to watch. Moving on down, we've got Tottenham Hotspur. Now, they have remained unbeaten, which is quite an achievement, but they've looked a little bit below their best these last few games. Um, obviously, Harry Kane coming back is, is massive for them. Although Deli Ali being out, it kind of... Swings and roundabouts, isn't it? Um, Janssen, I think, looks a player. I've been impressed by him. I know he's only scored penalties so far, but I think he will score in this league. And that's a really big plus for them to have another striker, apart from Harry Kane. And Son, obviously, is looking like a real player now. He's adjusted to the league and he's doing well. Lamella, I really like as a player. Um, Eriksen, great player. Dembele, the central midfielder, vastly over underrated, one of the best central midfielders in the league now. Um, yeah, but I think Sissoko, who they bought in, I can't understand why they paid that much money for him. I think that's a bad buy, and I think that will cost them. If they had one more player, attacking player who, who was in that top tier, not like Sissoko, who's massively inconsistent, then they'd have a real chance this year. Just, you know, the strength of their defence and their work ethic is immense. I think they might finish just outside the top four this year, Tottenham. Which just goes to show how massively strong the league is at the moment. Um, that a team that good could finish outside the top four. Moving on down, we've got Manchester United, who are in sixth place. Um, now, they are underachieving for me. And Mourinho, for me, it's controversial, but he is not the manager that he once was. I think his last year at Real Madrid changed him. He'd always had that intensity, you know... It was, he was like a grain of sand that created the pearl. He irritated, but it created something wonderful and it turned the attention within the squad. It was all focused within and yeah, his teams, his teams were awesome. However, he fell out with 
everyone at Real Madrid and his tactics seemed not to work. And it seemed like that first failure really hit him hard. He had this infallible air before and it often happens with managers that they're, you know, at the very top of their game and suddenly a defeat in season or something goes wrong and they start to question themselves. Um, no, he won the league at Chelsea when he came back, but it, he, he lost that squad even quicker than he's lost squads previously. And it just seems to be getting shorter and shorter and shorter. Still absolutely brilliant in the transfer market. He knows what he wants to do and he does the business early. He identifies what needs to be strengthened and he does it. And he's done that this year. But I think, I just, I can't see Man United doing much more than maybe a cup bomb. And I think he may only be there for a year or two. Carrying on down the league, we've got Everton who started absolutely brilliantly. Um, they're on a blip at the moment. And yeah, they needed to sign more players. Their new owner came in with all these big promises and I've been disappointed. Um, obviously, Blassi is a great player, but they needed two or three more great players in that team to really lift it up. Lukaku, one of the best strikers in the league, but he won't be there young. And I see Everton as kind of similar to Man United, probably higher mid-table, hoping for a cup run. Um, who else are we going to talk about? Obviously, Leicester have not scaled the heights that they previously did, but that's to be expected I'd say and you can see the intensity in their Champions League games is still there that they had last year kind of unexpected feel like they could beat anyone and cause upsets but they just seem to have lost it slightly in the league that intensity I think they'll be safe you know they'll be a mid-table club this year along with people like Stoke who have got a very strong team and a good manager Southampton strong team good manager um, I think in terms of relegation we are probably going to see the bottom current bottom three go down Swansea City just seems to have lost their ethic. You know, they were always known for playing good football. That seemed to be the way the whole club was set up. When they changed manager, it was to bring in a manager who played a similar style of football. And they've now ended up with Bob Bradley, who's, you know, inexperienced in this league, uh, not known for particularly pretty style of football. They just seem to have lost touch with what they're about. Hull, you can't expect to miss a manager about like that, to faff around with a takeover, to not strengthen properly and come up into the Premier League. They're going to go down. And obviously Sunderland. I think finally this will be the year that Sunderland go down. David Moyes looks bereft of ideas, he looks uninspired and the team, I know they got their first win recently but they just look too weak for me. The one underachiever that I'd like to, well two underachievers I'd like to name, West Ham United, they need to pick up their game, the squad that they have should be doing much better than that. And Crystal Palace, you know, Pardew for me should be under much more pressure than he is. He's been backed <coughs> Backs to the hilt by that club. They signed people like Ben Teke. They kept hold of their best players. They've got Scott Down, who's a great centre back. They should really be doing much better. But Pardew is a guy who wants to pick the same team every week. He's fine when he's on a good run, but when he gets on a bad run, he just seems to be yeah short of ideas and short of a plan B. And he doesn't seem to be willing to alter his plan A even when it's not working. Do you know what I mean? And I think he's got to be questioned. Padre has got to be questioned. He should be doing much better than he is. So there's my little brief Premiership overview as well. But the main point I wanted to take from this video is that Gareth Southgate is a spasmoid and in no way, shape or form should he be England manager.